Hey everybody, uh, let's see, how's my audio everybody? How do I sound? If you can help me out with the uh, audio. I would appreciate it. Please tell me how I sound right now. If you're there. I think I'll wait a few more minutes. Spot on. Hey, thank you. Thanks for joining me, Jangles. How are you today? I hope everybody's doing well. I hope if you're watching this uh, after the fact, after the stream is over, uh, thanks for checking out my channel. Check, thanks for checking out my videos. Um, so today we have a few things going on. As you can see, I have the uh, TTO2 Type SRX here. We're going to be unboxing this. So we're going to be unboxing the kit right in front of me. We're also going to talk about the XVO2 versus the XVO1 and if I have to bring up some points about the TTO2 I will do that as well um, because I do have a TTO2 um, rally, uh, the Subaru. So I'll bring that as well. My left hand is working on the uh, laptop sitting beside me keeping an eye on the chat all right cool uh jangles where are you from where are you watching from i'm always curious because i have a uh, audience from all over the world and then after the xvo2 i'm going to just talk about the tamiya championship series in case you're not familiar with it uh, give an update it was here in southern california just last weekend and I wanted to uh, kind of show some highlights, um, maybe watch a video. And then I also went there two years ago. I went to the one um, in Cal Raceway. Two years ago, I made a video about it. I want to share maybe a minute of that as well. Um, and then I have some interesting community poll results that I want to share with you guys. Um, so let's get all that done. Oh, UK, awesome. I... To me, it's really popular in UK, isn't it? I, I mean, you guys have so many channels. You got Tamiya Legend. Um, there's so many good Tamiya uh, focused RC channels um, on YouTube from the UK. That's awesome. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing today. I just want to share this with you as well. Ways to uh, support my channel: you can like, subscribe, comment, and share this live stream. Uh, if you're doing any shopping on Amazon, A Main, or Horizon Hobby, um, I'm sure they sh ship to the UK, but I'm sure you guys also have your own uh, hobby stores. So that's all right. And then I turned on Super Chat. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, basically it's just a, uh, a digital donation um, in real money. And it will highlight your message and it'll, it'll act kind of as a as a uh, donation towards me and all the money will go towards buying the next kit or the next piece of electronic um, improve the stream improve my channel that's where the money would be going to all right so that's probably enough talking for me so let's get this baby open I usually look through the box first and see if there is any interesting text or print that we can look at before um, we open it. Fortunately, this is kind of blocked out by this crease here. Um, and maybe so I can take off the so you, oh. 
I'm literally straddling the webcam, so it's a little bit awkward. So let's see if I can do this. And I think I'm going to have to recreate this um, unboxing to make a video out of it because um, I'm using this kind of older webcam that I have because I couldn't get the uh, iPhone to stream correctly. And I tried all morning, all last night, couldn't get it to work. Um, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to probably uh, remake the video and pretend I'm opening it for the first time. So I'm just going to read it to you because I know it's kind of blurry. For your safety, please let Tamiya battery packs, please use Tamiya battery packs with output of 7.2 and below. Um, basically, they're saying no lipos, but um, we'll talk about that later. Uh, we're not using a uh, Tamiya ESC, so I don't think that's going to be a problem. Ready to assemble radio control model kit. Not suitable for children under 14 years of age. Uh, model may vary from image on box. Model is not snowproof or waterproof. Specifications are subject to change without notice. And then over here, as usual, separately required items. Oops. Uh, you're going to need a transmitter, a servo, ESC receiver. Um, I don't see motor. Maybe this kit comes with a motor then. Okay, you need batteries, you need a charger, you need a LiPo. You're going to need a TTO2, TTO1 um, suitable size body, which is 257 millimeters uh, wheelbase. Uh, you're going to need tires. So I'm going to guess there's wheels in there, but no tires. And I think I have some tires. Oh, motors right here. Okay. So we're going to need all those things. Uh, there's some features here. Maybe I can do that uh, a little bit later on. I don't think I can get the camera high enough to read that. So let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and open it. Let me set this down. Hey, everybody that's joined us on the stream, say hi in the chat. Let me know you're here. Let me know where you're from. Um, let's get this party started. So I'm just going to open this up. All right. A lot of times these kits are kind of anticlimactic. There isn't anything spectacular in there. But let's see anyway. All right. So what's up here? Let me find something to prop up this box. Or fold it the other way. Yeah. Let me do this. Alright, okay. Alright, not exciting, but the first item I'm pulling out of the box is the urethane bumper. <clears throat> and then the famous uh, TTO2 chassis. I believe this is a hardened uh, plastic version. And it's also the version where the uh, steering is going to come from the bottom. Uh, this does have that uh, other steering setup. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, because if you look at a standard PTO2, um, I don't think there's a hole here. But anyway. All right. And this is the, let's see what this is in here. Of course, these are the uh, Calipers, I mean the uh, the wheel nuts. So this is the A tree. So we have the uh, damper stay, obviously. We have the uh, gearbox covers. We have the these are probably going to be the rear hubs. Um, I see some steering steering components here. Uh, here's the front hubs, uprights, um, rear upright, front upright. So this is the A tree.
All right, this bag has a lot of stuff in it. Let's see. Okay. So these are the diff gears. I just built one of these um, in the XV02, and these are the exact same gears. Um, these are the um, suspension <clears throat> suspension mount um, adjustments. You can, um, I, I, in America, in uh, like a team associated kits, they're called pills. Um, basically, you can change the angle and uh, position of the, uh, it's probably going to be the front uh, suspension arms. And this is the entry and is in uh, Nepal. I guess. Alright, let's see what's in this bag. These are the V. V is in Victor Trees. And these are going to be the damper components. I see the... Uh, gosh... These use the uh, spacers instead of... I'm going to have to buy new dampers for this car because this is a race car. <clears throat> kind of disappointed on a SRX that it doesn't come with uh, aluminum shots. Or does it? Now we'll see in a second. These are going to be the Y trees and I have no idea what these are oh th these are probably going to be the propel part of the propeller shaft or the um, the dog bone axles I think these are what it is something new for the TTO too these are other components for the dampers and this is the I think that's a Q Q tree all right there's the damper body the caps so that's that's what this is And these are obviously the lower arms, front and rear, and these are the D trees. And these uh, arms, you can tell it's a different it's a different plastic. It's not the same plastic as this, for example. It has a different sheen to it, and you can kind of tell it's definitely stiffer than uh, the other plastic. So that's good. I think the design's a little bit different as well. So that's cool. These are the lower arms, front and rear. If you have any questions, put it in the chat. I'll be happy to answer them as we go. The, this is the servo saver, obviously. So this is the... This is the Q tree. So what was that other one? I think I need glasses. And these are... Gosh. These also look like hubs as well. Uprights as well. Let's see really hard to see because there's a glare on the plastic. This is E as in Edward. The caster. And these are F. F as in Frank. And these are some more wheel hubs. Maybe these are the ones you use, not the first ones that we saw. Which is going to be cool. Yeah, it's two pieces. Look. It's this and that. I think we have to uh, connect it. So let's go. This is C as in cat. Okay, that was everything that fell out of that box, right? Let's look at the wheels. Real standard, basic five spoke wheels. At least it came with them, um, but you do need your own tires. And uh, I think it's just going to depend on what surface you're going to run on. If you want to run slicks or uh, whatever your track recommends. So those are the wheels. Okay. Let's look at this first. There's a lot of stuff here. And 
and these are the B as in boy trees and this is a different plastic as the other plastic as well um, this is the front kind of bumper holder that's I think that's the front skid plate or the rear skid plate um, you got some body posts you got some of the uh, standard arms uh, lower arms here hopefully we're not using those oh, actually these are the upper arms these two are the upper arms um, yeah so this is the there's some damper components here as well so this is the B tree there's two of them alright and this is going to be I don't think I need to open this we can see pretty clearly this is D, another D tree. D is in dog. Uh, let's see. Motor mount, we have the receiver case, spur gear cover, battery uh, holder, and these are the, uh, the motor shroud. I don't think I ever use these, except the part where you put on the, uh, the switch, which is pretty neat. I like that. So this is the D tree, and I see some servo components here as well. All right, there is the antenna tube that I never use. I probably have like 20, 30 of these. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna have to sit down to open this bag. All righty. Let's see what we have over here. I'll try to take them out by order. And this is the A parts bag. I see some screws here. Some really nice blue anodized aluminum parts. I see the ball of uh, the bearings are here, so those are probably the wheel bearings. Uh, I'm going to guess these are going to be the diff. This is going to be the diff oil. I see some shims. This is the spur gear. I see the spur gear holder and some propeller. Um, those are probably for the propeller shaft. I see some ball ends here. So that's the A parts tree. This is the first bag we're going to be using when we start building. Hello, my... Matthias, how are you? Good to see you here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, by the way, this video is going to be... Um, the entire stream is going to be replayed on my channel later on, on the live tab. Um, after we're done. And then I will try to just crop out this part of the stream. Just the unboxing um, as a separate video. So... People can just search and find it. Or I might just recreate the whole video. Uh, put everything back in. Kind of the way we found it. And then uh, we'll unbox it again. Alright. This is the B parts bag. And let's see what's in this one. I see the carbon fiber. I don't know if those are carbon fiber. But they're kind of a composite uh, damper stays. I see, I see some suspension... Uh, shafts here I see some dog bones I wonder what material this is because I've never seen that kind of I don't know if you can see this it's kind of like a it's it's not a silver color or matte it's kind of like a yellowish silver color I see some nice blue wheel uh, wheel, wheel hexes always a pain I see the axles I see the suspension mount right there, I think. Yeah, that's the suspension mount. And let's see if I can peek into... I see a lot of blue aluminum um, spacers. Oh, I see the axle rings. These axle rings are the same as the XVO2. Kind of a pain. I don't know if you watch my XVO2 build, but... These are interesting. It's a new, uh, I think it's a new thing for, for Tamiya, but they're kind of a pain. But that's okay. Uh, I'll walk everybody through it. That's what this channel is for, to help people build Tamiya kits. Alright, 
So this is the B parts bag. C parts bag, pretty obviously what these are going to be. These are going to be the damper springs. I see some um, rod ends here for the turnbuckles. Those are probably going to be the turn. These are the uh, damper shafts. I note these. Yeah, damper shafts. I see the uh, the groove for the eclipse, and then I see some body clips. I see the wheel nuts. I see some pins, some screws, um, a aluminum servo saver. That's gonna look cool. All right. So that's that. Let's just see. That's it. There's no B. All right. Okay. Sun gear, bevel gear. This is part of the diff, of course. Uh, another set. This is part of the. Um, this is the diff body. Let's see. I'm sitting down, so I can't see what's in the box right now. Let's see. And then this bag has the damper oil, uh, some grease, and it's the Molly grease again. Let me ask you guys, do you guys use these tubes? This is a, especially this one, I'm kind of hesitant to use this grease for this build. I did for the XVO2, but I think going forward, I'm not going to use these anymore. Um, Molly is supposed to be bad for plastics, so I don't understand why um, Tamiya would include these. I'm going to go back to using my silicone grease, um, the, the white kind of clearish one, opaque one. Um, I, I, I like the consistency of that better, it's a little bit less greasy and it's cleaner. And I know silicone is not going to affect plastic. So, which is strange. I see some foam tape, double-sided tape for the electronics. I see this beautiful propeller shaft. I think this by itself is like $9 as a hop-up. If I remember correctly. Let's see. And here are the decals. And it's only the TTO2 Type SRX decals and Tamiya. Um, the XVO2 kit also had the same kind. It's only the XVO2. Obviously, there's no livery uh, artwork or anything. And of course, the caution decals. Tamiya's famous for those. All right. And this is the disclaimer. I this I also have probably 20 or 30 of. Um, if this is your first Tamiya kit, it's probably worth a, worth a look. I have a big stack of those grease tubes. Rarely use them. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, I don't think this would be your first kit. But if you're just building the first Tamiya kit, that's everything comes in box, which is cool. And here is the manual. And um, I'll do this after the stream. I usually read kind of go through flip through the manual at the end of unboxing videos in the last uh, series for the xvo2 i made a separate video and kind of went over the manual in detail seemed to uh do pretty well that video seems to be interesting to people so i'll do that again so i will um kind of flip through these in a new video uh after the stream all right let me make sure there's nothing else in here this is a beautiful kit. Looking forward to building this. Let me ask you guys in the chat. Came with that grease. I don't use it. Yeah. Let me ask you guys. For next week's stream. Would it be interesting for you to watch me build some of it? Uh, of course, I'm going to start building this probably tomorrow or on Monday. And I'm not going to finish it on one sitting. So by next Saturday, I'll probably have some parts left. If I had to guess, 
I would say I'll probably be around, yeah, maybe in the middle, somewhere around here. Would it be interesting for you guys to watch me build a part of it? Maybe, uh, maybe like three or four steps or one part of the kit. Let me know in the chat if you uh, think that would be interesting. You'd be interesting seeing that. I have done kit build streams before, but that was on de dedicated to building a kit. And um, this stream I'm doing now, um, this time around. Yes, it will be fun to build. Yes, I think it will be fun as well. So thank you for the feedback. I will um, kind of announce what part I'm going to be. I probably know which part we're going to be building um, by the by like Wednesday. I'll know. Um, I'll plan it ahead. I usually only do like one component a day. So the front upper arms, the rear upper arms, the differentials. I usually just make videos that are related to each other um, just of just one component of the car so I'll know by Wednesday which part we're gonna be building awesome awesome thanks for the feedback guys okay so next actually let's look at the kit let's cuz I wasn't able to read the box so let's um, let's take a look at what is so special about this kit I did not pay 520. Let's see. I paid, I think, 250 or 270. I forgot. I didn't look at the receipt. I just paid whatever the hobby shop tells me to pay. So let's see. The oh no, this is the XVO2. I need the TTO2 SRX. Let's see if I can find it. Sorry about that. Let's see. I spent the whole morning trying to figure out how to uh, get the iPhone to work with uh, OBS and I wasn't able to uh, properly prepare for the whole stream. So here's the chassis. Yeah, see I paid around like 250 because I remember with the body it was only like 320 something so it can't be more than like 360 something 260 something like that okay uh, let's see is this full screen right now yes it is okay so let's take a look at this these pictures um, like I talked about see these nuts are on top that means the bolt is coming from the bottom of the chassis. So that's what I was talking about. Look at all these blue aluminum bits. Look at all these. This is what you're paying for. <laughs> this is what you're paying twice the twice the normal kit amount for. A little bit disappointed. It's pretty much, you know, plastic components for the uh, rest of the steering uh, parts. Um, you know, the bridge here is plastic these arms right here but at least these are going to be turnbuckles um, this is very similar to the XVO2 am I looking at the X XVO2 <laughs> it looks exactly the same um, so you got adjustable links here as well let's see and if you notice if you notice if you caught it um, you are true to me a connoisseur no more cross head screws it's all gonna be hex so that's great news I still I think you still need the um, the small like a smaller uh, cross head screw but for the most part you just gonna need a two millimeter uh, hex driver and yep see that that's that plastic again that I was talking about see how it's kind of this kind of powderish gray color I think this is a different plastic. Same as same with the arms, it feels like. And of course, this kit, everything's adjustable. Got the camber link. You got the toe links right here. This is the steering link, but you can adjust the toe here. Um, again, more blue anodized aluminum bits. 
Uh, these are oil filled dampers, but unfortunately they're not aluminum, which is a shame. Tamiya never misses the opportunity to sell hop ups. And here is, oh, it's spool. It's front spool. That's interesting. I didn't. I, I missed that part about this kit. Um, it's front spool. Have you guys ever had a front spool uh, car before? I've had two, I think. The uh, Yokomo SD9 I made into front spool. Um, and then probably the SR was also, and I built it, but I never drove the SR. I um, sold it right after I finished building it, which is a shame. Which is why when I saw the SRX was coming, I jumped on it. I'm going to try to borrow the SR from my friend and see if we can um, make a comparison video between the X and the SR. And there's all the other blue and aluminum bits. I haven't decided on electronics yet. I do have a uh, TBLM 10.5 turn mot brushless motor. And if I wanted to stay everything to Mia, I can certainly do that. I have another uh, TBLE 02S and 04S as well. Um, I can certainly make it to Mia Electronics if I wanted to. Um, but I'm probably going to go with a uh, either a Hobby Wing or a Reedy uh, setup. Uh, let's see. It's rear. Um, oil diff and these are the kind of that composite damper stay there's that uh, aluminum I mean the uh, suspension mount and these are the two pills the pills that I was talking about where you can adjust the position of the uh, lower arms exactly what I was talking about uh, you're gonna have a lot more position adjustments here on uh, on this kit you're going to be able to uh, stand up and uh, lay down the front and rear dampers quite a bit, which is cool. More tuning opportunities. And this is the rear from a different angle. These are the wheels. So I think these are just the standard um, to me on road tires. And there's the kit. I mean, it's a cool looking kit. I'm looking forward to building it. All right, so let's jump to, let me bring back the desktop camera so I can bring in the XV02. So I'm just gonna give you my impression of this because I, intentionally did not look at any um, reviews or um, even unboxing videos for this kit so that I can have an unbiased opinion. I did watch one video um, to see how it performs. It looked like a pretty cool car and I, I know just from building it I know this is going to be probably the best rally trim car that Tamiya makes right now which makes sense. It's 2023. Everything's brand new here. So this was it. Excuse me. Get a sip of water. So if you ask me for my opinion, and I don't know if anybody wants to hear my opinion, um, this is probably one of the most sophisticated uh, RC cars that Tamiya has, obviously. Um, there's a lot of really cool features. Let's see. I haven't taken this off since I finished it. Um, you have a center diff and you have two diffs in front and rear. You got adjustable links everywhere. So this is kind of a... Oh, and you have aluminum body uh, dampers. Um, so this is kind of like a, I wouldn't say it's like TRF or, you know, the higher level trim, higher, like really expensive Tamiya kits, but this is pretty, 
I don't want to say state of the art, but for for the kind of intermediate level kits, this is this is really cool. I have a feeling, and tell me if you agree with this or not. Uh, I hope the microphone is close enough. Let me move this closer. Uh, I don't know if you guys guys agree with me or not, but I think we're looking at a proto prototype for the TT03 if there's going to be one. Um, what do you think about, basically, smaller t damper stays, uh, shorter damper stays, shorter dampers, and you pretty much have the next touring car chassis right here. Of course, you don't need the uh, chassis cover, but you're looking at basically a touring car chassis um, minus, you know, all, all the other bits that, mi that makes this car... You know, a little bit taller. Um, you don't need these such a tall, you know, body body mounts, and you, you you have a touring car body. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys think this is going to be kind of the blueprint for the next TT uh, chassis? I really think so. I mean, they got something cool here. Um, it's a center spur right now, but you can buy the slipper. And or you can buy a uh, TTO2 XVO2 oil diff. So you got three diffs, three oil diffs then. And I'll probably end up going that route. Uh, I'm not going to bash this thing too hard. I think oil diff will um, do what I need it to do. So that's going to be pretty cool. So I wanted to show you this. So, and I think Tamiya. Basically, took the XV01, which is this one right here, and said, hey, we're going to build the XV02. Let's do the complete opposite of this car. So whatever this car has, let's do the complete opposite for this one. So what did they choose? So they decided instead of a front motor, which is odd, by the way, um, a front mount motor is such a weird setup. I understand it's a belt drive, you know. And uh, so all the weight's in front, where this is a mid motor, and it's not rear mid, rear mid like the TTO2, but the motor is actually sitting in the front of the tub chassis um, and you have a center diff um, this one has one gear box right here and probably one in the rear maybe a small one in the in the rear diff in the rear but it's belt drive so this is belt drive and this is shaft drive and not just one shaft there's a front shaft and a rear draft because of the center diff um, this one has plastic yeah, these are friction dampers. No, no, they're oil filled. So these are plastic dampers. These are aluminum. This went with this kind of um, covered uh, plastic protection, keeping the dirt out. You know, you got separate boxes for the ESC. I think this is the receiver. I built this a while ago. I built this almost a year ago um, to kind of keep the dust out. Where this uses this chassis cover. So, I mean, other than the wheels being the same, it's pretty, I mean, the tires, not even the wheels, the tires. Um, there, You can't have two more different cars. The ground clearance for this car is 21 millimeters. There's a picture, I think, on my Instagram that shows the, the two different. So this is 21 millimeters off the ground from the front right here. And this is only 13 millimeters. So there's a line, 9 millimeter um, ground clearance difference between this car and this car, which is amazing. I don't have a way to show you right now um, the ground clearance. But, yeah. So I have no doubt this is going to be more capable, more tunable, 
um, and probably just a lot more fun to drive than this. Um, this is archaic. <laughs> this is 2023. So I, I looking forward to to um, driving this. The body I ordered hasn't come yet. Um, I try to buy everything from my hobby shop instead of ordering online, and it just takes them a little while. All right. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. So that's the XV02 chassis kit. You guys want to guess which body I picked? Uh, leave it in the chat. Leave it in the comments. I'll be happy to uh, to respond. I'll tell you if you're right or not. Okay. I think we can finally get back to the... I can finally move the camera and get back to what I wanted to talk about. Kind of the desktop. Actually, you know what? Before we do, I want to talk about value um, of a Rally Chassis kit. Because, you know, there's a Tamiya TTO2 that's just as capable. Well, I don't want to say just as capable. That is an older chassis, but it, it's also a Rally trim. And that's half the price of the uh, XVO2 so I mean unless you really 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 wanted a Tamiya capable rally chassis there's probably better options and hate to say this but I think this is one of those options this is I can hear the booze already yeah Mateus I like to um and I'll show you, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, my local hobby shop in a bit. They are going to host the uh, uh, one of the Tamiya Championship Series races here in Southern California. And he's a big Tamiya guy. The owner's a big Tamiya guy. He's like me. I kind of nerd out when, uh, when I go over there. So this is the Team Associated. Yes, I know. Boo! Um, this is the Apex 2 Sport, A550 rally car. I think 550 is just a motor size. Um, and this is ready to run. This is RTR. It's $319 without a battery. $319. Uh, and I'll show you how much the XVO2 is going to be. And I watched one video, same, make, same uh, content creator as the XVO2 so I was comparing apples to apples and he drove both of the cars and I'll leave a link I didn't leave the link yet but I will leave a link to both videos um, the channel is competition X I'm sure you, everybody knows um, who he is um, but he drove both of these cars and he gave his opinion I didn't watch the review videos I only saw the racing footage because I didn't want to be biased I didn't want to um, kind of know what he thought about it. He's just so much more knowledgeable than me. Um, I only watch the uh, the driving part. So I think if you're looking for a kind of get out there and play around in the dirt rally car, I think this is going to be a better deal. Look, it's you get everything. Um, you have the motor, ESC, receiver, transmitter. Um, you got everything you need this is out of the box you can run outside and play um, you just need a battery charge a battery and if you wanted the xvo2 so again this is 319 dollars yeah i saw that that's that's a new conv conversion kit right that's interesting as well um, i sold my phaser but i maybe i'll buy another one just to do the conversion kit because it looks really cool um, but I think with everything put together, it's going to be closer to the XVO2 price. But I saw that. If you guys are interested in seeing that Kyosho um, Rally Conversion Kit, uh, I'll be happy to um, do it. Even though this channel is to me a focus, I love Kyosho cars. I've done several. I, if you go through my videos, you'll see that I've built several Kyosho cars. Um, so this is what it would cost 
Oop, no, this is not it. This is what it would cost if you were to build an XVO2. This is everything you need. And the total here is $506 US dollars. Um, so you need the rally kit. You need a body. Oh, I gave away what body I'm going to uh, I'm going to be using. Um, that RTR was brushed, so you would need a uh, 1060 or whatever. 1060 is probably the gold standard and it's very affordable. Um, torque tune motor. And what else? You need a you need a transmitter receiver, and I just picked pretty much the cheapest one they have, twenty nine dollars. I've used this clone version. This is the Horizon. Um, I've used the uh, the import version of this exact. It's it's fine. So it's thirty dollars, and the servo is the same price as the uh, uh, Reedy servo that comes with the uh, Apex. So this is almost two hundred dollars less. I mean more than the apex so again i'm preaching to the choir but unless you're a diehard tamiya enthusiast this is a better better buy i mean right out of the box you don't need to build it you have this cool looking ironically it looks like the audi quattro you have this body, everything's already built, and you just go outside and play. And the chassis is pretty robust. Um, it's 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 kind of beefy. It's not. Um, I, I don't think you're gonna be able to, uh, you know, break too many of these parts very easily. Um, there are some hop ups you can buy as well. You can buy uh, adjustable links here and there. You can buy aluminum dampers. It's team associated, you know. They they're known for racing, so they all they're going to have the um, racing hop ups for this for this car. And if it gets popular, there'll probably be even aftermarket parts from like Yeah Racing, Hot Racing, or whoever not is going to make parts for this car. And that's great. I you know the more cars we have to compete with against each other, uh, the better. We're just going to get better. Technology, more competitive pricing, so it's actually a good thing. And I guess rally is kind of picking up in popularity all of a sudden. Uh, maybe it's not all of a sudden, but it's cool. I really like the kind of the um, kind of that flat dirt track driving, maybe in a baseball diamond in the infield. Um, you know, just a dirt lot kind of drive bashing. That's cool. I've never been one to do too many jumps. I always land sideways and break my car. Um, so just being able to just run around in the dirt would be really cool for me. So I'm looking forward to driving uh, driving this. If I see this on sale, I might even buy this too. So again, if you wanted to support my channel, you can like, subscribe, comment, and share this stream. You can use my, if you're in the United States, you can use the links below um, for Amazon A-Main and Hobby, and Horizon Hobby. Those are affiliate links. Um, when you purchase something from clicking those links, I do get a small uh, commission from each uh, purchase. And I also turn Super Chats on so that you can... Um, Kind of make real-time donations to highlight your chat message. We don't have a lot of chats right now, so you probably a little overkill. Um, but all of that money, you uh, help me out with support the channel. Go towards buying the next kit, buying the next, uh, com you know, maybe the phaser conversion kit or the next Tamiya kit. So I appreciate it. All right, so next. I wanted to talk about the Tamiya Championship Series. Quick sip of water. All right, okay, I can move the camera now. So let me do that first. Because I'm straddling this camera 
to be in front of the computer and it's very uncomfortable. All right, so here we go. Okay. So here we go. Well, let's talk about the Tamiya Championship Series. So let's see. How do I make a poll? Let me see. Because uh, I want to ask you guys while we're here. Let's see. Have you have you heard about the Tamiya Championship Series before today? Alright, so there should be a poll that pops up in the uh, chat window on the right. I don't know if you guys see it. So I'm curious. Uh, we have seven people watching. It's not a lot. But I'm curious. I'm curious. Um, how many of you guys have heard of the Tamiya Championship Series before today? I didn't hear about it until maybe two, three years ago, and I only heard about it because it was coming to my track. Um, so that was kind of uh, interesting on my part. So Tamiya Championship Series is a year-long uh, racing series, RC racing series, that Tamiya hosts and sponsors. It is a race of several classes of several Tamiya on-road platforms and I'll go through the classes here so they tour the United States year-round I'm sure they tour other countries as well because there's a world championship at the end of the year in November and uh, maybe there's seven races every year uh, in here in the United States and they go from Southern California to you know the East Coast down to you know, the South they travel the country Promoting the Tamiya brand, getting people excited about the hobby, and um, just build a community, a great community of uh, people who are serious about uh, Tamiya platform racing. So, and there's winners of every race. They go to a world, I, I think it's the first place of like... Uh, I forgot. Maybe there's a there's a maybe there's probably a semifinal at the end of the year, and then the winner goes to get a fully all expenses paid trip to Japan to wit to race in the World Championship. It's a really cool um, kind of year long event that uh, Tamiya puts together. So I've heard of it. So I'm gonna vote yes. <laughs> 100% awesome. Okay, so the one person that voted has heard of it. A ch phaser chassis is about 140. That's true. Conversion kit is 110. Not bad. So that's 240. I mean, no, 250. Yeah, that isn't mad. That isn't mad. Um, that would be closer to the XVO1 than the, uh, than the XVO2. But I don't know. I haven't physically touched the uh, conversion kit. I don't know how good it's going to be. You're still using the same chassis platform that tip, that uh, Kyosho uses, the Phaser uses. So it's going to be closer to a TTO2 than it is to the XVO2. But hey, we'll find out. I'll definitely keep my eye out for one. So um, this is the Tamiya Championship Series web page on the Tamiya USA website. I've left a link uh, in the description if you want to check it out. Last week it was here in Southern California and they're gonna be here twice. They're gonna be first one was at Cal Raceway um, this one right here 
And, you know, before that, it was in Omaha, Nebraska, Michigan, Maryland, New York. See, it's all over the country. This is a great event. Um, wonder why this skipped. This is 286 and two, this is 285, but when... Well, anyway. So, I did not go last weekend. I had something else I was working on. But I wanted to just play one minute of uh, the... Uh, sorry for playing ads. Hold on. Uh, I can't stop it. Alright, so this is the Tamiya Championship Series from two years ago at the same Cal Raceway. And I just want to play the first minute of this, kind of give you guys a sense of um, what that's like. So in case it comes around your part of the world or uh, your hometown, go check it out. Alright, so here we go. I only stayed for the very beginning. I couldn't stay the whole day because it literally goes to like four or five o'clock in the afternoon. I just couldn't do it. And these are some of the classes, and I'll talk about those. And that was the novice class. Um, and that's what it's like. When those cars were all lined up, that was the uh, concourse uh, competition. The group photo, obviously. Driver's meeting, whatever. It's a lot of things. I think they award the uh, concourse winner. Kind of the best of show. The best looking car. Um, during that time, which is really cool. So let's look at the rules and regs real quick. I'm not going to read every single thing, but I, I want you guys to be aware. This is really cool stuff. So again, there's a whole PDF of uh, all the rules. You can click that if you want. So driver eligibility, it goes over, goes over the skill levels. So I would definitely just be a novice. Um, you get to drive a TTO2 and you get to drive with other newbies, but I'm sure there's going to be somebody who's actually a intermediate or even an advanced driver who races in the novice. There's always that person. All right. General rules applying to all vehicles. Uh, chassis must be a Tamiya chassis. Must be Tamiya parts. Must be Tamiya hop-ups. Um, there's a lot of rules here. Um, this this ensure a even playing field. I think they specified the motor and then the ESC. You can use any ROAR approved ESC. Um, it's going to be uh, no timing. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be no timing. Um, in at least the novice class. The batteries, you can use uh, any ROAR approved battery. Um, you can use the Tamiya stick packs if you want. Car bodies uh, must be a Tamiya body. It uh, must have all of the parts. You must cut out the body exact same way it's in in the in the box in the manual. Um, no cheating. You got to put a wing on and everything. Motors is whatever that class uh, motor spec is. They spec out the tires and wheels depending on the track. And this is the best of show concor concourse rules. And let's talk about the different classes. So the GT Spec Novice. I'm just going to read out the chassis because this is the only thing that's kind of interesting. 
So for the novice, you can only use the TTO one and the TTO and the TTO twos. Um, basically, several variants. Um, I think this is new. I don't think a couple years ago you can use any of the uh, racing variants. Uh, I see the SR and the RR here. I don't see the SRX, <laughs> which is a shame. That means I can't participate. I don't have. I don't have the SR anymore. Um, so that's the novice. And conveniently, they leave links to the uh, to the kits right there. So GT2 is going to be a little bit more advanced. You can use the XV1, surprisingly. Uh, you can still use the TTO1, TTO2, but you're going to get trampled by the other cars. Um, these are... This class is going to be the, uh, this is going to be brushless, so it's going to be, these are the faster guys. And then GT, what did that say, GT1 is going to be even faster cars. Um, these are going to be 13.5, 17.5 motors. The previous class was 17.5, 21.5. So no boost ESC, so yeah, so blinky mode. M chassis is always fun. I, I enjoyed watching the M chassis, those little tiny cars running around. It's pretty cool. M07, M08, you can use the other ones, but again, you'll get slaughtered um, by those two. Lots of rules there as well. Formula One. I'm always amused how these cars get around the track. I've talked to people who race in this class, and they tell me that it's harder, much harder to drive than the regular touring car chassis, but which is which is a good thing. And then the GT Pro Spec, these are kind of the real pro. Yeah, no, no, these are the uh, spec. This is the spec class. This is the intermediate class. So it's still the TTO twos. Um, this is the class where you can't use the type s so this is kind of this is the kind of step up from the novice class they should have put this after these novice class but anyway so this is if you're graduated from the novice class you would race in this class this class is also very crowded euro truck probably the most popular class in the entire race is euro truck there's probably like 20, 25 cars two years ago for this class race. Everybody loves seeing those trucks race around the track. It's a spec class, so everybody runs basically the same car. We did that time I was there um, in 2021. There was one gentleman who juiced his motor and... It was either the temperature or the RPM that the um, that the check that the um, the tech check caught and disqualified him from the from from the first couple races. So yeah, so it's interesting. The, everybody loves this class. There's going to be you know all three, all well, four of these. There's going to be a lot of the fat box. I have the fat box. If you're looking to build this, I have a build series in my in my channel. One of the playlists is for this truck right here. It's not hard to build. The body is the hardest part of the whole build. Um, but I walk you through that as well. Um, to me, a high torque server. You can, there's, again, there's a lot of rules and it's good. It keeps everything fair. And the newest class is the GTE. It's just the TC01 chassis. I have a build series on this as well. Not my favorite chassis. I've already sold it off. I couldn't get it to stay on the track for the life of me until I met somebody who told me exactly what I needed to do. But it was too late. I already sold it. But I have a video on the tuning and kind of setup tips for the TC01 um, chassis platform if you're interested in it. If you're having trouble with your TC01 and you went to YouTube and looked for a video, you probably would have seen my video already. But I have that as well. 
Um, there's only two bodies. It's the body that came with the kit or this Toyota Agazu body. They both look really nice. Um, this one was really hard to build, actually, the, uh, the Formula E body. I had somebody else build it for me, but he told me this is... He's been building bodies for many years, and he told me this is the one of the hardest bodies he's ever had to put together and paint. So, if you want to read more about it, here it is. The link is in the description. So, there you go. That's the Tamiya Championship Series. Oh, let's look at the schedule real quick. Real quick. Let's look at the schedule because I want to talk about this. Um, let's see. So, February was in... 180 Raceway, Larry's. So this was the one that happened last weekend um, at Cal Raceway. You can look at the results there. And this is past weekend as well, March 25th. So the next race in May, skipped April, I don't know why, but in May, it's going to come to Revelation Raceway. This is... Pretty much, if I had to call a track my home track, this would be it. Um, this is the hobby store I go to. This is where I buy pretty much everything RC. And they have a, a on-road track. They also have an eighth-scale off-road track. And they also have a small-scale dirt track that nobody knows about. It's on kind of in the front of the uh, of the uh, park. Um, so May 13th, I'm excited about it. I haven't decided if I want to race in it. Um, I'm not the best driver. And especially, I don't want to be there all day. If I race in one of the classes that races last, I'm going to be there till 5, 6 o'clock. You show up at 8, 9 o'clock and you be there 5 till 5. I just can't. Physically, I just can't stay there um, in one place for that long. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, I have many videos on my channel where I'm uh, driving on the on-road track at Revelation Raceways. Go go check those out if you're curious. If you're in Southern California, go check that out. I'm sure if you look at the Tamiya, is there a European website for Tamiya? If there is, there's probably information about races um, over there. So that's really cool. I really like this. Okay. So, finally, I want to get to something that I did last week, which I thought was super interesting. And I wanted to uh, continue that, and I did. And so, last week I ran a poll, quite a few polls, and I went through it um, on stream and so I'd like to do that again <clears throat> did everybody vote on the on uh, hmm. did any everybody uh, vote on the uh, on these polls so let's go through them. Um, this first one was probably, this was on Sunday, I think. This one's probably pretty obvious to everybody. Um, what part have you broken the most on your TTO2? Uh, in the, all, actually, any, any car. I didn't even specify TTO2 or Tamiya, so pretty much any car. And more or less, this is pretty obvious. I think the part that everybody breaks the most is actually the arms. Uh, sometimes the hub, you know, the uprights might break with it. So this was kind of a no-brainer. I kind of knew this was going to uh, to win. I thought it was going to be a lot closer, though, to the body, mirror, spoilers, wheels, because I've broken quite a few of those as well. I've torn up bodies pretty bad to the point where I have a video on how to repair Lexan bodies. So I thought that would be kind of like 35, 30 instead of this 4620 
that we ended up getting. Drive train. I've lost dog bones before. Just literally fly off somewhere I can't see. I've broken the drive cup, so that I, I, I can see that happen. I've also burned up electronics on the track before. So I've done all four of these. Um, God bless the people who haven't broken any of those parts. I wish you guys the best because it's a pain. Breaking parts, especially when you're out for the day, trying to have fun and you break apart. Ah, it's such a pain. All right. My neighbor decided to come and uh, play loud music, so I hope you guys don't hear it. Okay, so which TTO2 variant? I think this is on Monday. Do you own or drive the most? And this one surprised me. I thought everybody had the, t the standard TTO2. But no. <laughs> A lot of you... Maybe it's because it's my audience. Maybe my audience are kind of the uh, racers. I don't know. Who knows? But most of you, 42% of you guys, are driving TTO2Rs, RRs, Type S, SR, and ESRX. i surprised. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. I'm also surprised the I'm surprised all of the all of the results here um, that the TTO 2B was so popular. I didn't know a lot of people had that car as well. That's cool. Um, I wish I was smart enough to buy a O2B MS, even though it was probably like seven eight hundred dollars. I wish I bought it and just kept it in the box. Because that's going to be very collectible in a few years. Probably already collectible now. And I can't believe the drift spec got no love. I know it's not a true drift car, quote unquote. The drift purist look down upon the TTO 2D, I understand. But consistently, those kits come with the coolest bodies. You got the R32, uh, R34. Um, you got the RSX, uh, Civics. You got some of the coolest production cars, bodies on those kits. The Supra. I built a Supra. Um, so I'm surprised that the drift spec got no love. Not surprisingly, not that many of you have the T trim, the truck. I built that. It's pretty cool. It's not the greatest kit. I wouldn't go out and buy that. Um, but as a collector, I wanted to have all the TTO2, so I got it. <clears throat> and the FT. The FT is kind of cost prohibitive for a uh, for a TTO2. I have it. It's in the box. It's in storage. I don't know when I'm going to build this. I I have the black monster truck, the first one. So it's going to be collectible. And it's so labor intensive to build those tracks. I'm not sure I'm going to have the patience and time to build it. Especially make a video of it. Video series out of it. So we'll see. Maybe at the end of the year, like November, I'll take two months to build it. Alright, and then this got really interesting. Then I thought of, hey, everybody likes the TTO2. What's next? Because, you know, they come up with new bodies, usually production cars. I thought, hey, let's let's think outside the box for a second. If you guys had a chance to pick the next TTO2 body from any of the famous TV or movie um, cars, which one would it be? And the results, I thought everybody's going to pick the Batmobile. Maybe because I picked that Batmobile, the Michael Keaton, kind of the 90s Batmobile. Maybe if I picked one of the later ones, maybe the uh, Christian Bale one, um, it would have been more popular. Or even the original 1960 version might have been more popular than this one. But this one was kind of like the beginning of the revival of Batman. So I thought this one would be popular, but I was wrong. Ecto-1, I also thought more people would like the Ecto-1. But I guess everybody wants more of a race car-ish kind of body, which, okay, that's fine. Um, Knight Rider. Uh, I don't know if Knight Rider was kind of known worldwide, like Batman was, or even Ghostbuster was. Um, but it was basically a TV series 
where there's a crime fighter who drove a uh, a car that had an artificial intelligence and this is back in the 90s so it's kind of uh, ahead of its time so the car was autonomous um, it can drive itself it can respond it actually helped them fight crime so and it had that cool strobing red um, light in front kind of right here And it was just a, a, a cool Trans Am from, from that time. I think it's a Trans Am. Um, yeah, so I... that And that won. And that's cool. It, I can see this. I mean, it's, it's pretty close to your standard TTO2 bodies already. So it's, it's, it would have been... It, it is actually going to be a cool car if someone made it. But they have to make the front strobe. If they make this car and they don't have the front strobe light, don't bother. Because then it's just going to be another car. You gotta have come up with that LED that goes back and forth. Then, then it'll be worth it. If it can make that sound also, the whooshing sound, um, to go with the light, that's even better. And then there's the A Team Van, another TV series, another group of guys that fought crime. They were kind of the uh, mercenaries for civilians. If you had problems, come to them. They'll help you solve it. So anyway, so they drove around in this GMC van. Is this awkward looking van? But they they really kind of sportified it. They put a spoiler. There's a spoiler in the back. They have these oversized wheels. They have that um, brush guard in front. It's just a cool van. And TTO dude doesn't have a van yet. Kyosho has a van. I think the Phaser has a van. Has a van, but it's a monster truck van. But I, but you know, the, a van body would fit on that touring car chassis, so I thought it'd be cool. And it came in second, so I guess I was right. This Night Rider is just cooler. Okay, so I kind of skipped the day, and I asked, which cosmetic, cosmetic or body advancement would you like to have standard in future TTO2 kits? This one was runaway stealth body mounts for the longest time. And then pre-cut body decals and window masks came charging from behind and caught up. So, if you're not familiar with stealth body mounts, um, drift cars, like the uh, drift kits, come with these. Not the TTO 2D, but they should. Um, basically, you use the... You use either magnets or I think the newer thing is actually um, Velcro. And you connect the body to the chassis that way instead of punching holes and using the clips. So you get to preserve kind of the body of the car. If you are a collector or you're kind of just building kits for shelf queens, not having to punch that hole in the body means a lot. So I'm thinking going forward, if there's more kit, if there's a TTO3 or kind of future kits, if you have the stealth body mount option, that'd be great. If you're racing the car and you still want the punch holes, that's fine. But it'd be great if they came up with another option where you can just use Velcro tape and have the body go on. It'd be great for just guys who just want to put the car on the shelf or even the, the drift the drift guys that want to keep the body because it's all about scale for those guys. Um, another one is the pre-cut decals because, man, it's 2023 to me. Uh, um, having to cut those out by hand takes so much time and energy. I, I still haven't finished, I haven't even started the uh, XV01 body, the Delta body. Because it's just so tedious. After I built the uh, Fat Fox and cut out all those stickers, I'm just exhausted from cutting stickers. Um, and I can never cut the window mask perfectly. So if those two can be pre-cut, I would really appreciate it. And even better, if you can just pre-paint the bodies. Even if you just painted a, a full, you know, a solid color. Like the um, the plasma edge that I have, the TTO two B plasma edge, it came with just you know the the gunmetal body paint, and I still have to do the decals. That's fine, 
But if you can sell at a reasonable price, pre-painted, kind of pre decals, everything's already dressed up, bodies, I would really be happy. Because you and I, you and I as in my audience and I, can try to paint and cut out and put decals on body all day long and we still wouldn't be able to do it as nice as those that come from the factory pre-painted. This is just the truth. Light buckets would be cool for the drift kits. Um, I think they do already. Um, I've seen some of the newer TTO 2D kits do come with light buckets and even light kits, which is which is really cool. Um, and then an all alt livery decal set. If you bought a car and it came with you know one decal, one set of decal, that's like a real life de real life like the Martini livery, for example. If you can have another set that's kind of more just whatever, something that's just um, if you didn't want to paint it the martini trim, you didn't want to cut all those stickers, you can have something else. Maybe just a full stripe or just some cool like um, racing decals, different you know brands and just make it look like a NASCAR. So that's another idea. least popular idea, but I thought I'd throw it in there. And since that first poll for the cars was so popular, I decided to run again. So this is 62 and 72. So this, those are my two most popular polls. People just like to uh, voice their opinion, which is fine. So I found four new cars. I found the DeLorean, the John Wick Mustang, the Smoking the Bandit Trans Am, and the General Lee. I didn't think that a lot of people would know the Smoking the Bandit Trans Am. So I thought that was going to be in last place. But apparently not everybody's seen John Wick either. Um, I thought Back to the Future DeLorean would be a little bit more competitive. But apparently not. Everybody loves the General Lee. And rightly so. I think there's probably isn't an especially in my viewers demographics. Who are more like me. Kind of a little bit older. Uh, 35, 40, 50 years old. Um, we grew up watching Dukes of Hazard um, for many years, and it was, it was just a cool show. And it generally is probably one of the most iconic TV cars there is. So I'm not that surprised that it won in a poll to be the next TTO2. And then a day after that, I just decided to ask everybody, hey, between Knight Rider and the generally, which one do you want? And it was a runaway winner for the generally. It's the most popular TV car, at least in the ones I picked, to become the next TTO2 kit, which is great. I'd be happy to have a generally body kit. I also wouldn't build that either. I put, put that up in the shelf and hold on to it. And then yesterday I asked... What kind of servos, what size servo you guys use in your TTO2 builds? Because I prefer a low profile servo just because there's more room in the in the chassis for the ESC, for the other electronics, everything else. So I was curious how many people actually do that, and apparently not that many of you. Um, 40 votes, only 25%. So only 10 of you use low profile out of the 40, which is fine. I, I mean, standards are cheaper. Actually, not really. Um, there's some really affordable, good, decent, um, low-profile servos from, you know, the import ones. They're only like $20, $25. They're very decent ones. I use many of them. I build a lot of cars, so I can't afford to buy, you know, Savoxes and Hi-Techs and Futaba servos all day long. So I have to use some of the import ones. And I found one that's pretty good, a low-profile servo. Um, it's the SPT one. It's the blue one. I think it's called like SPT 1440LB or something like that. Um, it's in my Amazon store if you want to look for it. Um, but that's that's the, that's the servo I would recommend for TTO2. Unless for like the TTO2 FT, you don't want to use the low profile. Um, 
Uh, maybe even the buggy, you don't want to use low profile. But all the other ones, all the all of the uh, touring cars, low profile just makes it so much easier. All right. So if you wanted to know, if you're curious, what I have planned for tonight. What should be standard equipment on all TTO2 kits? Now the price would increase by half of the MSRP of that particular hop-up. So a set of adjustable arms and the kits would go up $9 on average. Set of ball bearings. I already know ball bearings is going to win. But I thought I'd run this poll anyway. Ball bearings for an extra $15 on each kit. Um, do you want the TTO2 mini shocks? $14. Gear diffs on all the kits. for. Actually this is only for one diff. So this will actually be $32. I'm sorry. They don't let you edit polls after you, you set it up. So this would be for two diffs. So it would be $32. But for $16 for two diffs, I know that's going to win. But it's $32, not $16. And then the steering upgrade parts. Like the uh, have the the bottom mount. That basically the SR steering kit. Instead of the regular plastic one. Just have the, the one that comes from the bottom. And if you have better... No, actually this one I'm looking at is actually the aluminum one. Yeah, the blue aluminum one. Yeah, it's forty dollars, thirty nine dollars. But if cane standard, why not? That'd be cool to have. Um, but I know the ball bearing set's gonna win. I already know. But hey, make your voice heard anyway. Go and vote. All right, guys. Um, that's all I have planned for today for today's stream. Um. Unboxing was cool for um, the TTO2 Type SRX. I'm looking forward to building that. I'll probably start building it tomorrow. So the first video would come out probably on Monday, maybe Tuesday. Um, I'll try to get as many videos made tomorrow as possible so that I can keep ahead. And then by Wednesday, I will know what I'm going to do on stream uh, next Saturday. So, and then what did we do today? XVO1, I'm going to try to go out to the track. Um, it's spring break, so I'm going to try to go to the track this week, this coming week, and capture some driving videos of all the cars that I've built. There's like three or four cars I have built that I haven't driven yet. Um, I just need that dirt track, the small dirt track, to be dry. Um, so I do need it. It's been raining a lot here in Southern California this year. So that track, the last time I was there, was flooded. And I don't think it has dried yet. Because it last rained on Wednesday and Saturday. So I'll go on Monday and check it out. Um, see if it's dry. I'll try to make a couple videos. I'll... Probably drive the TTO2 Subaru that I'm not going to drive the XV01 because I think I'm just going to sell that You know just Sell that right away because it's it's belt drive if I get it dirty it's gonna be a pain in the ass Oh the thing I hated the most about the XV01 was the bottom The uh, battery tray on the bottom. I know it's gonna dirt's gonna get in there. I just don't want to deal with it So I'm probably not going to drive that um, I'll put the XV01 on the track because I want to get some hop-ups for it and I want to see what the difference is going to be. It's a very tunable car. I think it's going to be fun to drive and uh, try to improve my times. Just like I did with the TTO2B. Uh, Alright. So, hey guys. Thanks for watching this uh, stream. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks for your comments. If you're watching this after the fact, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, share the stream, share the video. Really appreciate it. Help me with the Google algor the YouTube algorithms. And let's do this again next Saturday, 9 a.m. Pacific. So, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next weekend. Have a good day.